And this is one of those haunts that I've been thinking about for a long time. I drive through this country quite a bit on my travels. And I've often said, someday I want to go hunt mule deer down there. And it's really hard to draw a rifle tag down here. So I said, well, I'll throw my name in the hat for our Colorado mule deer tag, archery stout. And I drew. And so I'm down here the last four days of season, the uh, last four days of November. I probably should have given it more time, but my calendar didn't allow for more time. But I'm coming down and I'm doing something that I've always said, I want to go do that. Well, the idea is, in a place I've never been to, just get out in glass, get out in glass in this early morning and look for groups of does. The rut should still be in, in effect. So I'm just gonna keep driving, walking out on these points. What I did is on, on X, I could see this was an old burn area about five years ago. So I thought, well, one, burns always have better food, and two, they have better glassing when you're in these big pinion juniper complexes. A lot of people, I think, would say, oh, well, if you only have four days, why bother? Well, it's four days that I get to come and do something. And fortunately for me, the weather window was very, very mild. Uh, well, maybe that's not fortunate because maybe the deer would be more active if the weather wasn't so mild. But you never know what you're gonna get out here. Uh, I don't care if you're hunting the high alpine or the low desert. You just gotta go and hunt it when your calendar allows and the weather and the moon phase and everything else is just gonna be what it is. much habitat for them to be in. None of the water sources on my map that I've looked at or driven by, none of them have any water, so I'm thinking the spots I've looked so far probably aren't gonna hold a lot of deer until I find some water. But when you come to a new spot you've never been to before, your first day or two is almost like scouting days. Kind of what I got to use them as, just move and move, move and move. Check what's on my map, compare it to what I see on the ground, and either cross it off or decide, yeah, this is a good spot. I'm going to keep hunting. Huh? A lot of people, when they think of mule deer, they think of Colorado. I know I do. Uh, I've had the really good fortune of drawing some of the, the mountain west slope uh, mule deer tags in Colorado. Uh, I've had a lot of fun doing that. But this country here, this canyon land, juniper country, there's just something different about it that appeals to me. Uh, it's different hunting. It's a completely different environment, different setting. You look around and it's kind of a, a cross between Nebraska and northern Arizona, what it reminds me of. Finally, found a water hole right here that has a bunch of water in it. But this might be the spot, and it might be. It's about an hour, hour and a half after sunrise. So they might have already moved off to their bedding areas. But at least I found a spot with some water. The good part is that this tag is not super hard to draw. If I learn something and I say, wow, you know, that was a good experience, maybe I can come back in two or three years. So it's, some people would think that there's all this pressure that you have to fill every tag. Well, for me, a lot of the hunts that you see, I've been there hunting one or two times before that, and I got skunked. But they were what I would call borderline scouting episodes, uh, scouting hunts. And I like places where I know I can get the same tag every 
other year, or every third or fourth year. Because whether it's elk or deer or whatever, you start learning a little bit more about that landscape. You learn how the animals are using it. And by the time you're on your second hunt, maybe your third hunt in that area, you got as much knowledge as maybe some of the locals who only get to hunt it on weekends. So that's part of what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm looking for a place that I can come and hunt mule deer in the rut with my bow, something I love to do, and a place I can do it with more regularity than to wait and get one of the absolute premium tags that take 12 or 15 years. Yeah, not interested in that. I didn't expect to see a lot of deer today. I expect to see more deer tomorrow. So now it's just hunt for three days. Michael, the camera guy, said I can't shoot one tomorrow because it's still the scouting day. Even though the season's open, he said, look, if we're going to have content, we've got to keep scouting. So if you see one tomorrow, you're going to have to pass. I said, I don't think so. So, beautiful, beautiful place. Sun's going down, weather's beautiful. Today's a day of serious hunting. Now, we're gonna go check out some new spots this morning. So, we still have another day of mostly scouting. Hopefully we see something, uh, but after probably about two o'clock today, I'll sit down and say, all right, based on everything we've seen, sign and tracks, what, what on my map still looks worthwhile for the last two days? And then we're gonna hunt those areas hard the last two days. Got five does right here bedded below me. Well, walked out on this point and there's five does right down here. They have a little forky with them and then a small four point, looks like probably a three and a half year old. And they have a bigger four point with them. I don't know if he's three and a half, four and a half. He's bigger, he's bigger in the tree box. But they're just milling around down there. He's not a huge buck. Not that I have to have huge. But I think this is a good spot. I saw two other does working up this way. I saw another doe going up that way. So there's eight does right in here and three bucks, but I think there will be a bigger buck in here. I know a lot of people think about Colorado as being this huge deer mecca, and yeah, they have huge deer here. But for me, when I'm archery hunting, I don't know. It's more about is it a buck that appeals to me based on some character or some setup or watching him and, and getting to know him a little bit and feeling that all right this is me and this is him and we're just gonna try to match wits here and see if i can overcome the multiple obstacles required to get within 40 yards or less and so i i come here with the full expectation that in four days of hunting i might get mm, i'm hoping for two stocks Cool looking buck. He's probably only inside, only 18 inches. And I know the crowd that worries about scores wouldn't like him because he's short on the fronts, but he's heavy and he's super tall. Either he just looks super tall because he's narrower, but I know this. If I can find a way off these cliffs and that doe beds, I'm probably going to have to go make a stock this morning. So much for this scouting day stuff. Let's 
see if this is gonna work. We're gonna get our exercise today, if nothing else. Oh, we're cliffed out here. I was afraid of that. I'm gonna hike back up, go around that face and see if there's any place there where we can get through without being cliffed out. Dang it. Otherwise, I don't know how you get down there. Michael and I are sneaking and stalking and we're getting close and there's one last little ridge and I can see antlers going back and forth. I can't tell if it's him and I'm getting really excited. You can probably hear my heart was beating in the microphone and it's right here by my chest. Because I'm sure, I, I'm ranging it. And as I range, I, that rock was 50 some yards and I knew he was probably 10 or 15 yards from that rock. But I didn't come there to, to shoot uh, those bucks. Uh, I was focused on this really tall, deep fork buck. Where he went, I don't know. I really don't. Uh, I'm confident that when we made our stock, we had the wind in our favor, everything was in our favor, we were really quiet. I mean, the fact that we peeked up over there and there were still two bucks right there where he was, Tells me that either the heat of the sun caused him to get up and move, or once again, in the time it took us to make that hour and a half loop, the, the harassment of the other bucks just caused him to say, I gotta get out of here. Well, Michael's convinced me to go straight up this face, that somehow we'll find a gap through the cliffs. All right. Don't ask me why an old guy like me is listening to a young guy like him. I know better than that. like a bummer that I don't have a, a mule deer buck in my pack but coming up the, the rock face something told me I feel better not having it in my pack I guess for me that that practice run that Michael there behind the camera it probably gave us both a little more confidence that, hey, even as noisy and dry and crunchy and rocky as it is here, 
if we have the wind in our favor, if we just go slow and easy, we can probably pull this off. The morning of just glassing and glassing and not turning up any big bucks, I told Michael, I said, grab that camera, we're gonna go on some hikes. We're gonna go and walk all of these points, out this way, out that way, out this way, and we're gonna make this great big loop and we're gonna hunt our way back to the truck. And we did that, and as you see, there are not a lot of deer to show for it. I think we saw seven, maybe eight deer, one little buck and got a lot of exercise got to see some cool country but just how it goes some days my idea on a deer hunt like this is if i get a stock every other day i'm gonna be happy well I don't know how many miles we covered in the last five hours, but we did a lot of glass and checked a lot of little canyons and pockets. I think we saw eight deer, two little bucks. Tomorrow's the last day. <clears throat> I'm not gonna go scouting and exploring again on the last day. So I think tomorrow morning, you're gonna see me back out on that point where we've been the last two mornings if we see a decent buck. I think today is the day just to go on a stock. Maybe it'll be a big buck, maybe it'll just be an average buck, but the stock is the fun part. Whether or not I'll even put any tension on my string, who knows. But then again, there was a heavy bladed three point that was almost raising his hand saying ooh film me film me he sat there all day yesterday morning yeah he'll be in trouble today Finally, this is the biggest body buck we've seen. He looks really, really old. Almost like he must be on a downhill slide. Oh, here comes another buck. He's maybe getting another buck coming in. But he's probably 23 or 24 wide, heavy. Backside. G2 and 3 barely fork at all. Got a decent front on that side. And the right side is the passenger side is significantly better. And so we watched him and he ends up like they often do going up into one of these little cuts and disappears. He pushed, I counted five does up in there. And I start looking around about an hour later Still haven't seen him, but here comes the five does working their way out of there. I'm like, oh no, that's not what we want. Dang it, he must have pushed those does out of there and he went off up over the hill or something. So I'm gonna make a big loop out to that point with my spotter, see if I can, I'll have a little bit better angle. I'm gonna look down in there before I give up on him. Dang it. It's one of the problems, I guess, with the rut the deer are a lot more visible, but 
You never know what a buck's going to do. And I no more than set up the spotter, and the buck is just laying there with his head on the ground. And uh, I ran over and got Michael. I'm like, come on, let's go. Found him. He's all by himself. Those does all left. He's laying on a little knob. When I first found him, he was up looking that way. And he could see he's kind of doing this. And he just put his head down. And he is sleeping like he's dead. But with the sun coming up, I think he's going to sleep for maybe an hour or so. Hopefully two hours. If he sleeps two hours, we'll get in on it. But he's, we got to go way around that way to find a, a, a gap. Come down, and then we got to come back this way and up. It's gonna be a long track, but he's there. Nice buck. This is a killer spot in all aspects. If they stay there, and if this wind stays strong, this is that one stock I've been looking for. This is a quality buck. He's only got two does with him, and he's in a really vulnerable spot. So now that we got off that ridge, we're down here. The wind direction is about 180 degrees different, which isn't a surprise. Right now it's perfect, but it never stays the same direction. We'll see. We're just sneaking close and close. And the good part is this tree is so obvious. There's a great big flat rock to the left of it. There's another big tall rock to the right of it. If they're still in there, if somehow they, and I don't think, I would have seen them go up one of those faces if they would have scooted out of there. I'm, I'm starting to get excited. I, I can feel my heart going boom, 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 boom. Pretty soon we're at 50 yards. And I'm thinking if this wind doesn't mess us up, this is gonna be perfect. And there's a big rock in front of me. And I'm thinking if I can get up to that rock without getting winded and move slightly left, I think that buck is bedded right behind that rock under those limbs. And we're getting closer, I range the one rock off to the left that I know that's about parallel to where the, the buck is. I range is 42, 40, 45 yards, something like that. Whew, this is really good. And I turned to Michael. We'd probably stood there for 30 seconds and a really hard thermal comes up the drainage and I see a flash of white stand up and I'm looking through all these limbs and I'm sure that buck has stood up. Dang it, stop, come on, give me, give me a break here. Well, they walk across out this kind of rocky spot and they start walking away from us and we're kind of bemoaning all the wind, blah, blah, blah. We were at 43 yards from right here where they're bedded. And the wind just as quick as we came around that corner, the wind came, switched from trying to stay a little bit on the crest of the rise. I knew they were on the back side of this tree and they wouldn't see us. On the crest, the wind was going more east to west. And then they were right here at 36 yards, but it was the doe, the buck, just, he was hidden down further. And they stood up there at 82 yards. I'm not taking an 82 yard shot. He was, he was bedded right here. So that's it, and we were over here, and I saw him 
stand up and step over here. That's how I saw that he got out of his bed. I just saw him standing like right here to my right. So right here where he was bedded. He didn't see us. No, he's moving. But you get up here and the wind's just 43 yards. Well, I said I wanted another stock. I got another stock. But look, the does are sitting there looking at us right now. Michael, I'm like, let's just sit down and see what happens. Crazier things have happened, and we're here, we got nothing to lose. And uh, those does, they just kept looking at us. They're like, what's going on down there? I have no idea how long it took, but they start coming from our left to our right, and they're in this little opening, and pretty soon the lead doe gets into some brush, and then the, doe, the fawn gets into some brush, and the buck stands there for the longest time, just looking at us and he's framed he's such a beautiful beautiful buck nice white face he just oh man and i told michael i said if if they go into that brush you stay here i'm going to drop down into this cut go down cross over and come up the next cut out in front of you and i'm going to be right underneath them And I'm sure I'm out of sight of Michael because I'm down in this cut that's probably 10 feet deep and I'm just working my way, working my way, getting closer and closer. And every once in a while I can see him up there and where that cut ends, it starts gaining some elevation and I'm starting to get up into a position where, you know what, if they come out, I could shoot here. I'm ranging everything. Okay, 38, 40. And so I wait there and I wait there Pretty soon the doe starts walking her way back up to where the buck was. And uh, I, now there's so much brush, I don't have a shot. So I gotta step up about three feet, four feet maybe. And I do that and I get up and I'm like, oh, there they are. They're framed in this opening. Now I've cleared all the brush. And I range her, ooh, 32. And she starts walking off. I'm like, I don't care about her. All of a sudden the buck steps into this opening right on the, just perfectly framed between the trees for me. And just as I'm coming to full draw, over he goes through some brush over the other side. I'm like, oh man, so close, so close. One of the lessons of this stock, one I already knew is you just can't trust the wind. It's, that's what screwed us up, but we did not give up on the stock. But I think I accomplished what I wanted to do. I came here, I said it, I love the stock. I archery hunt for the stock. Yeah, don't get me wrong, I wanna fill a tag. I could have probably filled my tag if I would have went and stocked all these little two and three points that we saw. Some of them were even nice three points, but I just, I don't know. I wanted to see more of this country. I wanted to hunt it all four days. I wanted to have a stock on a, a quality buck, and I got that, actually two of them. Uh, I, you know, I'm gonna be leaving here in, in an hour, and I'm gonna leave here completely fulfilled. I think everybody understands that for me, it's not always about filling tags, and I think that's the same for a lot of people who watch our content. I hope what you'll do is you'll find those places that you've always said, someday I'm gonna go hunt there, and you go do it. That's the message of this whole hunt, this story. I've driven by this place for 20 years and said, someday I'm gonna go do that. Well, this was the year, this was someday, and I am so thankful I did it. Now, it's just one more thought, one more place that's always gonna be in my mind of, all right, I'm gonna build some more points in Colorado and I'm going back there. If there's some place you've always thought about that said someday, there's some person you're always gonna hunt with and said someday, some new species, some new weapon type where you've always said, yeah, someday I'm gonna do that. 
Go do it. Go and do it. Do what I did here. Come and explore, have the adventure. I can guarantee you, you will not regret it. You will enjoy it. Trust me on that.